Here's, here's why. I'm going to go to R2. And I'm going to set up remote access to R2. Okay? I'm going to set it up to where it will use Tell Me. So how I do that is I have to go into the VTY lines. I need to, I need to set a uh, username and password and all that good stuff, right? Everybody remember how to do, how to do that? I, VTY, four, uh, login, local, user, name, um, BR Brown. Password system. Okay? Excellent. Now that was on R2. Let me go ahead and do the same thing on R1. Find BTY number four. <coughs> Log in local. User CR. We'll make it um make it a different user. Um Jay Smith. Pass. One, two, three, four, five. Memory. Good. Now, if I do a telnet command from R1 to R2, based on IP, 10.0.0.2, username. I'm, I'm in it now. Password's not set on the enable. Uh, let me set the password, enable password. Got in, I got in from my backtrack machine. Everybody saw that. Let's turn on Wireshark and see what that does. Okay? So I come up here, I want a list of available interfaces. I'm going to go ahead and start my capture. I start getting packed. 
go back to backtrack, I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did. I'm going to tell that to R1. Username. It was, oh, it was J Smith. Password. Is enable. And now I'm in R1. What's the typical thing that you do as soon as you're in there? You look at the running config, right? Oh, yeah, see what I got. Okay, that's cool. Let me just uh, stop the run right <coughs> after there. Okay, so I've stopped it. You can see that I have picked up quite a number of uh, information here, right? So, one of the things that's very powerful about Telnet is I can track a conversation. I can track a TCP conversation. Okay? So who's had forensics? Who's had 481? You may have 481 one of you, two of you. And in digital forensics, one of the things that um, uh, you can, you, uh, everything's dead, right? Everything is static, okay? This is how you get information in network forensics to be static as well, okay? So not only can this be used offensively, it can be used defensively as well because you can find out what people are doing on the network. So, case in point, unauthorized access. If I go here and I go up to and, and pardon me for I go to one of the Telnet ones, I see my source is my backtrack machine by IP, my destination is my router. If I right click on one of those packets, I can go down here to follow TCP stream. If I click that, that's going to filter it out to what in essence is a notepad. Look what I got. Username, J Smith, because it's 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 echoing. It's a TCP conversation, but I can make out that it's J S M I T H. My password. I typed enable. There's my password. This lady and gentlemen is why you don't use telephone. That's why you don't use Telnet. Because if I can, or somebody who may not be as upstanding as me, can gain access to this box, or this box, start sniffing packets, that's just to a router. I can do that with NetBIOS traffic. I can do it with LDAP traffic. I can do it uh, with SSH, but SSH is encrypted, then I have to run that through a, a filter of some sort. It makes it more complicated. Not impo impossible, depends on how strong your encryption is. Okay, how, how strong you set that. Not impossible. All right. Um, so, locking down your infrastructure, extremely. Here's what I want you guys to do. 